Hey, and welcome. We are here for another episode of the Netflix limited series, Clickbait, episode five, titled The Reporter. The episode opens with Ben Park interviewing Emma. She's saying Nick was unhappy in his marriage. He was only staying for the kids. She trusted him. She thought they were soulmates. And then, you know, she learned he played her and he told this to many other women, the exact same thing. And Ben asks, um, what do you make of the signs? Um, so after the interview, he shows he shows it to his boss. It's an exclusive. Um, he says he reached out to Mandy Harrison, is waiting to hear back. And the last woman is unidentified, but he'll keep on it. And the boss wants to interview with Sophie. Um, Sophie Brewer, he says, you know, she's not talking. The boss lady's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to need you to make that happen. So Ben, you know, I think he's back at home. He starts hitting up Sophie's social media and he starts reaching out to her friends. Alice, who I believe was the lawyer friends, like, yo, cease and desist. Like, don't don't send me no my messages. Like, I'm not. So one of Ben's coworkers asks if he's hungry and Ben, he gets an idea in his little silly head. So he heads on over to the brewer house with the coworkers lunch. Kai answers the door, he walks away and leaves the door open. Like, why? I guess he's looking for Pierre or some other adult, but why would you leave the door open? So Ben decides, you know, to just let himself in. He starts taking pictures. Pierre catches him and, um, you know, she starts screaming and hollering. She threatens to call the cops. Sophie comes in and she throws him out. But before he throws out, he's like, you know, Emma is talking to the press and she's saying that Nick, you know, the mystery. She was Nick's mistress and he abused her emotionally, I believe. Um, and, you know, Nick's not here to defend himself. So, you know, he says to Sophie, why don't you speak on his behalf? And, um, Sophie not trying to hear it. She throws him out. That's that. Um, Pia tries to call Emma. She leaves a message. And Andrea, you know, she doesn't think that it's a bad idea that Sophie does to interview him. And Sophie's like, I'm not doing it thanks but no thanks so now ben is home with his boyfriend and they're trying to figure out um how to see if they can find any more profiles nick may have created on other sites but he needs he needs to have a profile and these are straight sites and clearly he's not straight not that that makes a difference but anyway so he says you know the story could advance his career and he could make a difference and the boyfriend asks, could he help so Pia calls Amiri and he shows up off duty with his son. Um, I think it was is it Araya. Uh, and he basically says, you know, Emma is she's not breaking any laws by speaking to the reporters. And Sophie asks if, you know, there are any new leads, but nope, there's no new, no leads. And Sophie, you know, basically says she's gonna call her lawyer and she walks away. She's not happy. Um, Pia asks, you know, what is it that you're not telling me? Because Detective Pia is always on her job. Um, and she reminds him that, like, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be here, buddy. So he says they're trying to track down the car that hit Emma. So basically, he's not trying to kill the story because it may flush the person out. P is like, y'all just don't care what happens to people. Like, that's messed up. But so Ben is he's scrolling through the university's page and he finds some suspicious posts and then he figures out, um, that one of the people that made the comment was one of the girls on the volleyball team so he skirts on over to the school and confronts the girl her name is jenny he's got his you know his reporter friend with him and she's like you know we can't talk to reporters and he's like you know he repeats the comment that she made basically trying to call her out and she's like you know you've got the wrong person and he's like you know we're start trying to establish a pattern um that he's done these things before and he, that he's you know maybe verbally abusive i can't remember what he's saying nobody cares because ben is just he ain't whatever so she gives her gives him a name tara wilson and she says you know she doesn't have evidence she just heard she and nick arguing of um and then a week later she quit the volleyball team and then who comes to the rescue matt um Jenny leaves she's like mm. and Ben lies and says you know he was thinking about joining the team and Matt's like he was going to join women's volleyball um okay um like I said Ben the co-worker was there with him recording the whole thing and so yeah I guess now is the time to tell you my feelings that you know Matt is one of my top three suspects but you know we'll get into that later that's all I have to say about that for now because Matt just seems to so, um, 
Ben and the co-worker, they show up, camera and all, at Tara's job, asking all these questions. That's not cool. You don't show up to people's jobs. You could have got that girl fired. Um, ben asks if, you know, he can ask a few questions about Nick Brewer. And she's like, what about him? And Ben says, you know, you had an argument a few weeks back. Do you remember? Um, and that was before you quit the team. Jenny Henson told me and she was worried. And Tara, before she walks away, tells him, Jenny doesn't know what she's talking about and neither do you. Later, dude. So Sophie shows, Sophie shows up at the news station with her lawyer. She's upset that Ben and broke all into her house, which, I mean, I don't know why you thought that was a good idea. So the boss doesn't care. She's like, she's not killing the interview. And she tries to convince um, her to get ahead of the story and says that she'll bury Emma Beasley's interview, you know, and so finally Sophie agrees. Janine gets the interview because Ben broke into her house, so he's not reaping the benefits of it. She's lucky that he, you know, he's lucky that she didn't press charges. Um, Emma interviews, and Emma's interview is cut, and Ben is off the story. You know, Ben is not trying to hear that. So, at home, he continues on. His boyfriend found one of Nick's fake um, deactivated accounts. And Ben wants to find a way to get to access the info. And the boyfriend's like, you know, buy the data. Companies sell data in batches from pre-existing sites for new sites for a couple hundred bucks. Wowzers. And scary, but real. We be giving consent, all kinds of stuff. It's just, yeah, yikes. So Pia stops in to visit Sophie at night. The reporters are still lined up outside. Um, and she heard that Sophie's doing the interview and she tries to discourage her. Discourage her. But so, so, you know, Sophie's like, you know, at this point, like, I'm just going to try to get control of the narrative. So Ben gets the data he's looking for. He's got all of Nick, who we find out is going by Jeremy, um, his info. Cam, which is the boyfriend names, tells him to see who he's interacted with most. They find Maggie Oxley from Sacramento. But as he's trying to run his Googles and get some information on Mag Maggie Oxley, she doesn't exist. So Cam suggests, you know, she probably used a fake name also. And so they look at one of the pictures in the background. It looks like she's at a bookstore. And so there's 26 bookstores in Sacramento as Ben is running his Googles. And they find one through seating through quite quickly, I might add. But, you know, that's none of my business. That has the same bookshelf with the same books. And they go off on a road trip. And they get to the bookstore. They ask the guy, um, who I, I, I'm assuming was the owner, um, that he's looking for an old friend, Maggie Oxley. And turns out that was the name of the mascot. Womp womp. It's just a little old kitty cat. There is no, you know, whatever. Um, so he shows him a picture and he says, oh, he's like, he's like, oh, Sarah. He's like, Sarah, Sarah who? Um, and the man's like, who are you again? So Ben's like, you know, I need to get in contact with her. She could be in danger. And boyfriend cam's in the corner looking like dude what are you doing like this is not whatever so the owner reveals that sarah burton which was her name she died four months ago so they leave they're on the phone they're looking her up they see there's no cause of death i think her parents have passed away and she has a brother the brother's name is simon ben looks simon up says simon looks creepy indeed he does ben he finds his address so the two go over to simon's apartment cam you know he waits in the car he really he waits in the car, you know, to let him talk to him. But he thinks that Ben is going to go like a civilized human being and sit the brother down as a reporter and ask him questions. But Ben goes into Simon's apartment building. He knocks. There's no answer. So he finds the spare key under the mat and he lets himself in. And Ben really needs to be arrested and charged with all the B&E B and e he's doing. And, in, in, you know, in this season, in this episode and everything, it's like, well, what are you doing? You walked into, I mean, granted that time the door was open but you still were breaking and entering this time you found the key let yourself in so he starts to take pictures of photos that he sees on the wall he's searching all around the man's apartment and then simon's headed back cam realizes the ben is up to no good and he calls him it's like i you know calls him on his cell phone it's like i thought you were interviewing the man and the man is on the way his way to the apartment like you need to get out of there so ben finds a box under the bed with his nosy self with what looks like sarah's things and he takes the phone he gets Cam's call and he hides because he couldn't get out in time. So when he tries to sneak out, Simon chases after him. Ben barely gets away. 
Ben is like on a total high. He's like, oh my God, oh my God, just barely made it. Oh my God, did you see his face? You look crazy, crazy. Cam is pissed and he's not amused at all. So back at the police station, Amiri calls Pierre. He apologizes. He, and she's like, you know, how do we process our feelings when the, you, you know, and move on from the situation with all the media frenzy? Um, her brother is dead. And she says, like, now she's like, she don't even know who he is. So just like find out who did it, who did it. That's what you could do for me, Amiri. Apology great. Apology is nice. But, you know, I don't know who, who he is anymore. I need some answers. So when Amiri hangs up, one of the te detectives tells him, I'm I'm sorry about all the noise. I probably can't even edit that out. So you just gonna have to deal with trucks in the background. Um, that the plates for the, from the car that had, you know, chased down and crashed into Emma, they're fake plates. And all they have is like a partial blurry photo on the video. So um, we're back to Ben and Cam. Cam tells Ben, you know, I'm going to stay at my parents for the night. And Ben doesn't understand. But Cam is like, your reaction, like, you broke the law. These are real human beings on the other side of these stories. And he, you know, Ben, he's not trying to hear. He's not trying to understand. So Cam drops him off. He goes, you know, Ben plugs up and searches Sarah's phone. And of course, you know, he's a reporter. He's an investigator. So he finds a disturbing conversation too between Sarah and Jeremy. He rushes off to work. I get, I'm assuming the next day he goes to show boss lady, whose name is Dakota, the printout of the messages. And, you know, he's like, I'm interv interviewing Sophie Brewer. And she wants to know his source. And he's like, I can't tell you, but they're real. And he threatens, like, if you don't give me this story, I'll take it to another news outlet. So, you know, Pia and Sophie back at, I guess, I'm assuming Sophie's house, they talk before she goes to do the interview and, you know, Pia, she's just really searching who Nick, who Nick, for who Nick truly was. And she's trying to convince um, Sophie not to do the interview. Sophie's going to do the interview. So she basically says, you know, we can we can all watch the interview together. And, you know, she wishes her good luck. So, so are, Sophie and her lawyer friend, they're off to the interview. And, you know, she's prepping her on the way there in the car. But they really, they just have no idea. Um people at the news station like hey Ben don't F it up okay he's like I won't be so the lawyer friend she sees Ben and she's like nah uh, 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 uh. and Sophie's like you know what at this point let's just get it over with so the interview starts Sophie's doing well as she rehearsed so Ben brings up Nick's past record he talks about Curtis um and of Nick's other relationships he says Emma says Nick emotionally abused her and Sophie's like no Nick like Nick was the victim and then Ben drops it on her he's like were you aware of Sarah Burton who was Nick's uh another one who's involved with Nick blah 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 were you aware of Sarah who Nick was involved with who took her own life and Sophie's completely and totally blindsided so he continues and he pulls up the transcript for her to read you know she's reading it to herself and then she and then he asked you know is that why Nick was Nick was murdered and Sophie asked like where did you get this from like yo you're sick I'm done I'm out of here she storms out she's upset so Ben he's pleased with himself he gets home, Cam is there, and he asks if, you know, Ben thought about what he said. And he says, you know, you were never like this in college. You're ruthless. And he wants him to hold himself to a higher standard. And Ben's like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Who I am is at work is who I am, and I am not ashamed of it. So Cam is like, all right, bet. So he leaves. So Sophie doesn't want the boys to watch the interview. She's always trying to protect their children, but they're teenagers, so they're going to see it anyway. So finally, Pia and the boys convince her. They all sit down. They watch as a family. Like Sophie, she's horrified. Mary's watching. He's at the police station. Cam's in his car. He's watching. Um, in the interview, Ben plays a reenactment of the text where Sophie threatens to take her life. And we see, like, everyone's watching. And lastly, we see Simon who is Sarah's brother watching and that's where the episode the episode ends and like it was a lot it was a lot Ben is indeed ruthless like I have no words I, you know I hope you'll come back and join me for episode six thanks for stopping by before you leave share like subscribe drop me a comment in the comment section appreciate you peace